I'm Jason Shepard, and these are the fundamentals. Transmission Mike 2251 Zulu. When 210 at 15, gust 1 Niner. Gusting up to 1 Niner. Well, we make, do we make the fundamentals of landing uh, an easy day, right? So, like I said, we're going to be doing some fundamentals, some different fundamentals here. Starting out with a no flap landing. I'm going to show you. It's going to be interesting. And actually, it's somewhat appropriate. Granted, it's gusting to, to 1 9 or gusting to 19 out here. A no flap landing is going to be appropriate. And to the Mike Zulu's midfield, right down one for a touch and go, please. 2 3 Mike Zulu, Cal Tower, runway 1 8, clear touch and go. 1 8, clear touch and go, thank you. 2 3 Mike Zulu. All right, so I'm on my downwind. Again, a no-flap landing. I need to adjust my patterns accordingly here. So I get to beam my touchdown point, the number's 1-8. I need you to start using your procedures. For me, it's carb heat, power back. When I say power back, roughly like a run-up RPM, maybe a little higher, 17, 18, 1900. I'm pulling back to 2000, 1900. Normally, I'd add 10 degrees of flaps. I'm not going to. I'm going to also fly this downwind out just a little bit further than I normally would. Uh, two factors, not only because it's no flap, I will have a little bit of a bigger pattern, so I have more opportunity to come in and get this as normal of an approach path as possible, which will help me manage my speed better, so I'm not diving to get down and picking up airspeed. But also, when I am gusting, I'm going to turn base now, a little beyond my, probably about 10 seconds later than I normally would have. I'm turning base now, another reason with it gusting 19, Wow, it's just going to be hard to get down. I mean, I'm landing 1-8, it's 2 0, zero gust up to 1-9-er. It's a little bit of a crosswind factor. It's just going to be tough to get down in general. I mean, even if I keep this airplane nice and slow, there's going to be a lot of air just flowing over those wings, keeping me afloat, and this airplane loves to fly. So I'm only descending uh, about 200 feet per minute now. There we go. I have to adjust power. One and only one. I just want some more power back. I'm turning final now. Okay, so I'm in a spot here. If you look, I'm only at 800 feet. AGL, MSL are about the same. I normally turn final about 500 feet. 210 at 17. 210 at 17. Now, it's steady. That doesn't include my gusts. So I'm thankful I'm this far out. Happy lights show I'm high. I'm also about a half mile longer than I typically would be, which allows me to then still hit the same spot at 500 feet, just like you heard, where I would normally be. I've got the power to, I don't know, 1,300 or 1,400 RPMs, it says. I mean, idle, that's pretty close to idle. That might be 10, 15%. I'm going to give it a little bit more. I've got a little bit of a sink. This is another factor on a gusty day like today. You're going to ride the waves. You're going to catch the big gusts that you think, oh, now I'm high. Then you lose that big gust, and then you end up sinking. I've got one light on my pappies. How's my speed, though? It's easy to stare at the pappies and go, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm one light high. What I'm most concerned with is look at my airspeed. I don't like being 80 this far out. I need to manage that a little bit better. How can I adjust that? Well, when I'm on glide path like I am now, look at the pappies, I can pick that nose up just a little bit. And look, even without flaps, I can manage to get some reasonable landing speeds. Now, here's another factor. I've got 17 knots of wind hitting my pitot tube right now. How much of that 76 indicated is real? Right? That's a question you kind of have to ask yourself. How does the airplane feel as well? So coming in here, it's looking good. I'm looking like I'm a touchdown on the first center line stripe. That's where my eyes are looking. Power's coming back to idle because I have that runway made. There goes 1-8. Oh, a little long on my projection there. How about the end or the beginning? Oh, caught a gust. Sometimes you catch a gust and it just proves everybody wrong. and It'll set you down like that. No flaps to adjust. Car repeats coming in. Confirm this is the throttle. Throttle's coming in. Heels hit the floor. Toes to the bottom of the pedals. Woo! Riding those waves more of a crosswind than they're saying there. And we are up and flying again. A no-flap landing. A great thing to practice. And another reason we practice this is, we'll talk a lot about this, is landing at night. More on that when we cut to that. But let's go ahead and let's cut away here for a second and let's pick it back up on the downwind where I'm going to show you kind of the opposite. I'm going to show you a power-off 180. I promise. I know this sounds hodgepodge. 
I promise if you do this in this succinct order, it's all going to make sense. And at the end, on landing number five, our normal landing is going to come in just like butter. All right, let's go ahead. Let's, uh, let's cut back down to the ground where I can share some more teaching points with you. And then let's cut to the downwind. So why do we practice a power off 180? It's actually a power off accuracy approach to landing is its technical term. Our real goal is to learn how to guide our airplane, the power off configuration to a very small piece of pavement. It's actually a commercial pilot maneuver, but I even make my private pilots practice it. Maybe not to the same accuracy as a commercial pilot, but it's gonna benefit you so greatly. What if I were to have an engine failure and it's just this small field I'm aiming for or the beginning of that small field to maximize my rollout? We need to know how our aircraft glides in the power off configuration. And then what does a turn do to that equation as well as we bring it around? So let's head up and let's kind of pick it up from the crosswind downwind. And let's, let me show you a power off 180. And two, three mic Zulu, as you enter the uh, downwind, you should be able to see your citation. It's about a mile and a half or so straight in now. Traffic to follow in sight, two, three mic Zulu. Cal Tower, number 3868, three miles southeast of SoCal. Uh, two, three mic Zulu, that uh, traffic you're following is full stop. Number two, runway 18, clear, touch and go. Number two, 18, clear for touch and go. Thank you, two, three mic Zulu. All right, so we are cleared for our touch and go. Continue report midfield now on the Again, working through these fundamentals, working through the basics. Now, doing a uh, gusting to 19, steady at 17, uh, not wind for a power off 180. And not my, uh, if this was my commercial pilot check ride, I would not be feeling too warm and fuzzy about the whole process, right? Because wind poses such a challenge, but it allows you. Uh, coming from the no-flap environment, which was all about managing speed, yet without the drag, this time doing the power off 180, we're going to be still be managing speed, but without the thrust. Again, there's a, there's a reason we're following this syntax, this order that we're doing everything in, because by the end of this, it's going to make you a better pilot. I promise you that much. My goal is going to be the beginning of the first center line strike. Three, two, two, sir, tango. Runway three, stripes are 120 down, feet in length left on alpha, with, um, and right with 80 feet in between to the next stripe. It gives me the perfect 200 foot box. Okay, alpha, I'm already cleared. Alpha, touch and go. Alpha seven with I beat my touchdown point. Carburetor heat. Alpha. My power is going to come back. Normally alpha, I'd add 10 degrees of flaps in there. Left down, wind, only one I'm not, I'm not going to do it here just yet. for Skyhawk on the opposite down one ahead of you that's touch and go report I'm going to manage my glide speed. Fly out about seven seconds or so, right about here, and I'm going to turn my base. Now, it's so easy to get excited. I have a tailwind now. Now I have a crosswind pushing me away. Plus, with winds, we're like 220 at 170 cent, right? So it's pushing me even more. It's easy to get excited and go, whoa, I'm going to blaze right through this thing. I am so high, I need to get on down. And then you turn into 20 knots of wind with all your flaps in, and you come up short. It's an easy mistake to make. I made such a mistake. I'm going to go 10 degrees of flaps right here. And we're looking good. Again, I am, I am sinking much faster. Look at this, 800 feet per minute, much faster than I'd actually like to be. Um, but I'm telling you, I'm going to go 20 degrees of flaps. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn final here. Much easier to get oh, down than it is to get back up. Watch what happens the Number moment I turn into three, this eight, monster six, 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 wind. Number two, follow that traffic, runway one at Quidland. It is going to slow down my forward speed, slow down my ground speed so abruptly. You might look at the pappies and go, wow, Jason, you're high. Man, I'd rather be high. To the right, Zulu doesn't have avoid slips with flaps extended, so I could slip this thing on in if I have to. I like my speed. My speed is 75. Uh, I'm showing 60, 59 across the ground, though, so not being much of a help to me. And really getting rocked around. Just keep my hand here on the throttle just in case. I have to go around. I'm going to land with 20 degrees of flaps. I know that sounds a little bit crazy. Again, and you look at the commercial pilot ACS, it doesn't really say where you need to... Um, where you need to be flap wise. You can do it no flap, you can do it full flap, you can do it partial flaps if you really had to with this. All right, speed's now slowing to 70. I am losing a gust now. Let's see if we can stretch this thing on out as we begin to slow on down. Look at the pappy lights now, tell me I'm low. Again, they're geared a little bit for further down the runway here. We're looking good. I know this airplane has a tendency to float, so I'm gonna hold it off. Aiming ahead of my point, hold it off, hold it off, hold it off, hold it off. Ooh, how did I do, wing cam? I think I might have been like two feet too early. We'll let you all on the wing cam tell me how I was with that one. I, I, the center line stripe was coming so close. 
it might have been. Again, there's no reason to be that precise with it. You should go 50 feet long, is what you should really aim for, just so there's no discrepancies. Flaps are up, carburetor heat is off, smoothly applying some full power. Wing cam? You could tell the truth on that one. Was I, was I a foot or two too early, or were we right on there? I'm not sure about it. I couldn't quite tell. We'll let you all be the judge. Let me know in the comments. Give me a, give me a score on that one. And we'll continue on here. The next one we're going to do is actually a seaplane technique. So I can teach it better and ATC doesn't talk over me a little bit. Let's cut back to the ground because I want to teach this more thoroughly to you and then we'll cut to the down one where we're actually going to demonstrate it. So now we're getting into some seaplane pilot techniques with a glassy water landing. This is something that actually sounds counterintuitive. You would think nice, smooth, beautiful glassy water would be best for seaplane pilots to land on. It's actually my least favorite configuration to land and as a seaplane pilot, the water is so reflective. You really can't see anything, you can't judge depth or anything like that. So we do what's called a glassy water landing, which is where we put in ourselves in a landing attitude, about 200 feet AGL, and we slowly descend. 50, maybe 100, maybe 150 feet per minute, allowing the water to come to us. This is the same thing. Maybe you'll never be a seaplane pilot. I would uh, encourage you to become one though. This is the same kind of technique you should follow though if you lose a landing light at night. By the way, let me know in the comments who's ever lost a landing light at night. Whether it be the landing light's fault, an alternator's fault, a battery's fault, whatever it may be, something electrical. If you ever landed at night, either on purpose or by practice without a landing light at night, you know what I'm talking about. And it's something great to practice with your instructor as well, landing at night without a landing light. Anyways, this is a new maneuver for you, so let's head up to the cockpit and let me show it to you. One eight clear, touch and go. Thank you to the maximum. All right, winds are getting better, I guess. Hey, we're gonna turn you on to seaplane pilots, whether you know it or not, this time. And again, you see, no flap, glass, glassy water technique, how this can benefit you, say, if you have an alternator failure at night, right? How am I gonna turn, or, or what if I, not just alternator failure, I can't get my landing light on, what if I just lose my landing light? Quick forget there, that's correct, sir. Just uh, in as well. Carby, power back roughly 17, 18, 19, even 2,000 RPMs, depends on your airplane, 10 degrees of flaps. Treat this just like it's a normal landing. So on the glassy water landing, where the magic's gonna really start, is around 200 feet AGL. Around 200 feet AGL, I wanna set up a pitch attitude that allows me to continue to descend, but I don't wanna descend really more than 150 feet per minute. I'm gonna use power, and I'm gonna literally, in, in seaplane flying, we let the water come to us, we say. I hold my pitch attitude, and I trust that the water is going to come. Well, we're gonna do the same thing with the pavement. Now, with this technique, after this 200 feet AGL, you wanna avoid a lot of turning. Obviously, in seaplane flying, it's less about following a center line. You're just trying to pick a lane to actually land it. Here we have a center line. There's some other things we need to certainly consider. Going 20 degrees of flaps on base. So if you think you're gonna side load or anything like that, don't make crazy changes. If you're gonna go around, go around, right? Even at less than 200 feet AGL, please. So we've got this. I got a little bit of a crab technique coming in here just because of how I'm being pushed away. And when I get to about 200 feet AGL, I'm just going to set my landing attitude and give myself about 100 foot to maybe 150 foot per minute actual descent. Nothing more than that. 210 at 12. 210 at 12. Life's getting, well, better. Less velocity. Um, 210 is not exactly that helpful landing 18, but that's okay. Better than most of my other options. So you want to have typically, let, let's pretend this is landed at night and I lost my landing light. Anybody ever done a no landing light landing on purpose is preferred. You don't want to have to do it in the real world because something dies, but sometimes that happens. If not, it's something you need to practice, but you need to do this, this uh, five part sequence here before you even consider doing such. So I'm lined up nicely on center line. You heard my 500 foot call out. You know, I'm gonna go, I'm spoiled that I can really choose my flap settings. I'm gonna go about 25, 26 degrees is what it looks like there. I'm coming in and everything is looking great. I'm at 400 feet. Again, AGL, MSL are just about the same where I'm at in Florida. So we're getting down there and everything's looking really great. Then when I get right about here, about 200 feet AGL, I'm actually going to have to give it a little bit of power. I'm giving it power because I need to arrest that descent a little bit. I don't care where you touch down on the runway, right? This is simulating I lost my landing light. I'm just thankful to be down. And I want you to establish about... 100, 150 foot per minute to 
descent. I'm gonna use a little bit of trim in here, and I'm gonna hold this attitude, and I'm gonna look like I'm landing long. I am landing long, that's fine. I wanna set this up, and I'm gonna let the ground kinda of come to me, because if this was at night, this is the technique I'd wanna follow. Right in, between the, the, right in between the runway lights, right? Because I can't see anything. I'm just trusting the ground is going to come. I'm, holding, I'm at 100 feet per minute right now. I'm getting blown around a little bit. A gusty day is not the best day to practice this, but it's what we're given today. I'm at 50 feet per minute. I'm literally kind of like doing slow flight down the runway in a way, which is next for us. 50 feet, 100 feet. I'm just holding this attitude. I'm not changing my pitch attitude. I'm going to touch down wait, wait, with power. My power hasn't changed. 50 feet per minute. Oh, that was actually one of my better landings, right? Then bring the power back to idle and land the airplane. These are flaps, confirm their flaps coming up. I got plenty of runway left. Carburetor heat, full power, here we go. Got 4,000 feet of runway left, 3,500 now. And we're up and out of here. So taking some techniques from uh, my seaplane pilots out there, that one will come easily for you. But choosing that power setting, and holding that pitch, choosing that pitch as well, it's gonna give you, I mean, I got down to about 50 feet per minute there at the very end, and it just set itself on so nicely, and I landed with power. Now, you might say, oh, I'm gonna land with power. That's a, for every land, you can't do that. You also saw I left 3,000 feet of great runway behind me. That's not gonna be acceptable. This is, in that situation, at night, I've lost my landing light. And you might be saying, how are these fundamentals? How are seaplane pilot techniques fundamentals? Trust me, the things we're doing, integrate so perfectly with the science of learning. And what the next technique we're gonna do is one of my favorites. So again, I can teach better on the ground to you. Let's head back to the ground. Let me teach you a little bit about slow flight down the runway now. So you've seen me do slow flight down the runway before if you've been following MZ Ray for any length of time. It's a favorite of mine. It is a great way to get students to quickly improve on their landings. But I'm bringing it back up here again. And you're beginning to see why we're gonna be practicing these in this particular order. I want you to get down and hold that airplane just inches off the ground, practicing slow flight down the runway. You'll see here as we demonstrate, the ailerons aren't too terribly effective. The rudder is our key to success though. Anyways, enough from me. Let's get flying, let me show it to you. Slow flight down the runway. Like we said, you wanna have a nice long runway before you actually practice this. The goal is to get as close to the runway as possible and not actually touch down. We're gonna treat this just like a normal approach. So I'm gonna be my touchdown point, carburetor heat. My power is gonna come on back. I'm gonna give it 10 degrees of flaps. It'll be fun today since today is so gusty um, with how this works. It'll be really, you, you hear me use this term a lot, riding the waves. We'll be riding the waves. Um, very much so, no doubt. So we've got that. I'm gonna go ahead uh, about another second or two. There's my 45 degree angle. Let's turn our right face. Doing this right traffic too adds to the, you know, where we get so ingrained to doing left traffic. Doing this right traffic adds just another element uh, to it sometimes. Some of you might be super comfortable with right traffic. It just depends on you and, and the majority you're flying to. Maybe you're a helicopter pilot, right? Right traffic makes sense to you. 20 degrees of flaps come in here. Also good engine instruments set, set, set. And again, I'm just treating it like the next one that's gonna be a normal landing after this. We bring everything together, but realistically, I just wanna bring this in and not actually touch down. I brought the power back, I'm at 1300 RPMs. I'm turning final, I'm at 700 feet MSL. I'll hit my five, you'll hear my 500 foot call out here in just a second. A little on the high side, no problem. Nothing we can't fix with my last notch of flaps. Put those sails out there. With my 500 foot call out, I'm probably a tenth of a mile closer than I'd like to be, maybe even a half of that. Not too bad. We'll get down again with this big gusty wind. It's, it can be hard to get down, but I'm not covering a lot of ground going into this much of a headwind. And it sounds like as we've been going, the wind's been getting calmer and calmer. You see the sun's starting to set out here, so the wind is getting calmer and calmer. My eyes are looking at the numbers 18. And we're just bringing it on. 2009er. 2009er. Life's getting better, right? Slowly as we go, it's getting better and better here. Now, as I come in here, I'm looking at 1.8, I'm gonna actually be adding a power because I don't want to touch down. Woo, good gust. I want to just do slow flight down 
the runway. So I'm all configured for that. And as I get into ground effect, or what I typically transition, remember I don't like to use the word flare, I think it just gives a negative connotation. When we get into ground effect, I just add a little power, I'm at 1500 RPMs, and I'm holding this here. 1500 RPMs is doing it. Similar pitch attitude, but with a more of a level attitude to our glass water. I'm sinking, I'm giving it some power. Stall warning, I'm giving it some power. 1800 RPMs, holding it right here. 50 is what my ground speed is. 60 is what's indicated. Holding it here. Don't touch the ground. Ah, don't touch the ground, Jason. Hold it here. Now, I need you to note something real quick. I'm going to show you. Let's make sure the cameras capture this. Look at my ailerons, right? Look what they're doing right here. If I was at 90 knots, what would the airplane be doing right now? A whole lot. Now, watch my rudders. Ready? Watch this. Woo, look how effective these rudders are, right? These rudders. This rudder. Look how effective my rudder is. My rudder is everything. I've got 2,500 feet of runway left. I'm going to go carburetor heat, leave my flaps where they're at, full power. Just execute this new go around now. I'm going to be mindful of this. I got a lot of trims. I'm pushing forward a little bit. Flaps go right to 20. Let me get through this. I'll teach you another second. Through 70, flaps to 10. Confirm pause rate of climb. Confirmed. Flaps up and out. Go around. Procedure complete. All right. You see the ailerons aren't doing much. Go try to do that same thing now, right? The airplane rolls just about when we do that. The rudder is what's most effective at these slower airspeeds. Slow flight down the runway can help you gain better control of your aircraft. And if you ever find yourself landing off center line, if you ever find yourself side loading the airplane, slow flight down the runway can help a lot. And our glassy water landing was a precursor working us up to that again. These seem like just all these random landings. It's something called mixed practice. And this mixed practice is going to all culminate now in landing number five, which, gosh, if you're doing more than five landings, maybe six, maybe you can stretch to six landings on a lesson, you start getting mental fatigue after that. Five, six landings is about all you need to do with that. You see how long this video is, right? The diehards made it this far in this video because you're thinking, I need to improve my landings. You want to improve your landings, right? So we're going to bring this around now for a normal land. I'll keep you going with me in the pattern here. Here's my pattern altitude. I'm turning downwind. Let's go to the mic Zulu's turning uh, right down with now 1 8. This will be a full stop. 2 3 Mike Zulu, aren't you right? 1 8, you are clear to land. 1 8, clear to land, thank you. 2 3 Mike Zulu. All right, we're going to have a quick downwind with that big old uh, tail when we got. They just turned the lights on. It's getting, it's getting late here. Everything's going to culminate into this a normal land. We did all sorts of different landings. You see, Mixed practice says doing the same thing, doing like six or seven or ten touch and goes, all the same style, actually isn't good for you. Do you remember the video back in February? I think it was the second Tuesday in February where I did the mixed practice radio calls with Magda. You get to see how she improved as we went along, and we did class D departure, then flight following, then pilot controlled, uncontrolled radio communications, all very different things. Mixed practice right, helps us continue to improve because we're always varying what we're doing there. All right, be my touchdown point, car beat. Power's coming back, 10 degrees of flaps. Team, on your fifth landing for this lesson of the fundamentals, just show me a nice, normal landing with one bit of criteria. I never want you to do a normal landing without a point to hit. If you want to fly at the Aviation Mastery level, and I hope you've pre-ordered your copy of Aviation Mastery, the book, aviationmastery.com. All proceeds benefit our 501c3 foundation. I want, if you're pursuing that mastery, to never do a normal landing without a point. Just have a touchdown, a desired touchdown point. Make it a little game to yourself, right? And... Again, you could do nothing before, 200 feet, whatever you want to do, private, pilot, commercial, standards from the ACS, uh, guidelines, whatever you want to do, but always have a point. I'm going to go for the first center line stripe. That's nice and easy. I told you earlier, 120 feet in length, 80 feet in between, so I know what a 200-foot box looks like. 20 degrees of flaps going in, by the way, and turning final. 200 zero zero at Niner. 200 zero zero at Niner, so a little bit coming this direction. And at Niner, nothing too major here. Nothing we can't handle the lights on. Uh, sure make it a cool approach. There's my 500 foot mark as I roll out from final. That's about where I normally hear that. Here twice. All right. And all's looking good. Again, gone are the days. If you want to pursue mastery, 
in aviation. Gone are the days of just saying, you know what? I'm just thankful to get the airplane down. I'm thankful to use the airplane another day. Well, that, that's something to be thankful for, for sure. Normal landing, give yourself a point to hit every time. You're constantly improving because as you start to dive more into cross countries or instrument procedures, whatever that may be, you're going to be doing more go-arounds and more just one landing <laughs> flights than you're used to from your private pilot days. Maybe you're there already. Let's work on a normal landing. Airspeed is king, we know. I'm at uh, 79, slowing to 76 now. I'm going to land with this 20 degrees of flaps. I really like that a lot. Airspeed slow into 70. I show, uh, th uh, there we go, two red, two white on my pappy, which is actually a hair low for the first center line stripe, but no big deal. Airspeed, 69. I have an aiming point of 1.8 ahead of me here. There we go, there we go. Here comes our first center line stripe. Let's see how we do now, wing cam. Where was I? I think I was right in the middle of that stripe. A better spot to be than I was last time. And just nicely slowing it down here. Let me just ask Tower one thing, and then we'll close this thing out. You okay for a back taxi back to Alpha 1 for 2 3 Mike Zulu? That's fine. You can make a 180 and exit Alpha 1 back to your hangar, sir. Thank you. All right, uh, back taxi Alpha 1 to the hangar. Thank you, 2 3 Mike Zulu. All right, I just want to, we have a, no problem. so much construction going on right now, I just want to confirm with him. I'll clean up the airplane once we get off the runway here, so we're not distracted with all of that. And Missouri Nation, I know this was a longer video, so thank you for those of you that are hearing these words right now, because you played full out. One, three, one, we look at our, we look at our YouTube stats, and the majority of people three, drop off after one or two alpha. things if they don't think it's thank interesting or whatever that may be. You are the diehard, so thank you for that and playing full out. I can't wait to read your comments below this video. This is the first of our Fundamentals series. You thought the Fundamentals were going to be boring. I'm telling you, I'm going to be sharing some really interesting things. And these are lessons and little mini lesson plans you can go out and practice yourself. You want to improve your landings? You want to improve your flight train? Let's start to interject the science of learning in it. Today you saw mixed practice at play, and we'll go ahead and work through that more. So listen, I read all your comments on YouTube, on Facebook, on M0A.com. Uh, have a blessed, amazing, outstanding rest of your day, and most importantly, remember, good pilot is always learning. Have a good day, everyone. We'll see you.